All righty, hello. A little bit later tonight, but hello and welcome to tonight's fantastic dinosaur action. Two, two more days until Outlaws of Thunder Junction and this deck, and while any deck that can reasonably make the seven mana gets access to Voltborn Tyrant. Oh my goodness, that is my goodness. Christmas. It's Christmas, it's New Year's, it's all the holidays rolled together. But tonight, continuing the trend of trying different stuff, classic stuff, seeing what works, what doesn't work. It's been a long time. I was just looking back before I started here. About four months, roughly four months, since I was using Otepic Huntmaster and Marauding Raptor, which I'm sure I'll try combining with this list but why did I cut it that is you know the question I thought well these early creatures that are lovely for aggression they almost always die to fatal push and uh, fiery impulse get lost you guys know all that stuff it's pretty much guaranteed it's not great to rely on that early acceleration to get there so that was my inspiration and my continued love for this list making a bunch of big mana in about the most stable way I'm not relying on that early stuff but then i'm like huh what if i keep that all in but i also have this that's not actually the list we'll go to the one that only includes hunt master we'll start with that tonight maybe marauding raptor tomorrow night something like that and i went to two colors no black i thought Maybe it is just better to get there, focus on the main game plan of this, elevate it with Huntmaster, keep up that consistency. Pugnacious Hammer Skull, switching that out potentially for Marauding Raptor. Earthshaker Dreadmaw in two days, this becomes Vaultborn Tyrant. Pretty, pretty straightforward right there. Huh. But yeah, if Huntmaster survives, lovely stuff. Of course, you know, the first turn likely is going to be a tap land, some considerable commercial district. Hopefully, it would be this to start Castle Garenbrig on turn two. Excuse me, commercial district. Oh my goodness. Had too much to eat for supper. But yeah, commercial district is a forest type land helping Castle Garenbrig to enter the battlefield untapped for turn two. Love it. We go Huntmaster and then Sunken Citadel on turn three, perhaps supercharging it on that turn four, as is often the case, able to make six. But now I can potentially have Tyrannix Rex enter a little bit sooner, possibly Galta Stampede Tarrant, and just adding more haste with Huntmaster here, tapping to give one dinosaur that. Wow, that is going to be lovely stuff because. As you guys may have experienced or seen happen here. One Polanyi's Hatcher enters. They kill it. Nobody gets to attack, sadly. Now at the very least, Huntmaster could give Galta Stampede Tyrant Haste. Something like that. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm quite excited. I didn't add in Marauding Raptor just because, well, I wanted to see how it feels. Of course, Marauding Raptor kills later hunt master sometimes that's the case you keep a hand with just marauding raptor you play it on turn two then maybe a couple turns later you draw this sadly it is a dead card now but that was never a problem for three years i used that combination three and a half years or might have been four i don't know i lost track but it's not that bad however marauding raptor doesn't just kill hunt master now with planes hatcher part of the inspiration to just trim rotting. I definitely prefer Polanyi's Hatcher instead of marauding if I'm worried about the potential of it killing stuff. I'll trim marauding any day, keep in Hunt Master because marauding kills those two egg tokens. I lose out on potentially two, three, three dinos. It is rough. Marauding, pinging Hatcher plus the two eggs though does mean that temporarily it gets to eight power. Starts off with two, Hatcher, two eggs, temporarily plus six. I mean, that could also be pretty good, but 
We'll see. We'll see. Who knows? But maybe if I just don't worry about the eggs dying, I pretend like they don't exist. And then sometimes I'll get that temporary power from rotting, and maybe that's better. Maybe it's not as bad as I thought. Trimming Huntmaster and marauding all those months ago. Maybe this could be the right direction. We'll see, we'll see. It is a little bit scary, trimming black, losing out on extinction events, anoint with affliction, stuff that exiles creatures, especially the Vein Ripper. That's scary stuff. And trimming white as well. Also kind of rough, losing out on ley line of sanctity, giving us hexproof and stopping thought seas and duress and all the hand hate that is not great but if i jam pack good accelerators more early it's going to be harder to hate out against getting there we'll see we'll see but sideboard wise pick your poison vampires anybody brings in artifacts to hate against this damping sphere of course has hurt me a little bit i think it hurt me last night well that goes away as long as they don't have a blood token from blood tithe harvester or something like that it's good it's good thrashing as well three copies just because if we want more artifact hate there you go possibly with this new cost reduction hunt master playing thrashing brown to dawn for two green always lovely hunt master maybe giving this haste and perhaps if i'm playing thrashing brown to dawn on turn three I do have one extra mana left over with the third land. Huntmaster, boom. Drops this at a reduced cost. It attacks. And then with that one left over on turn three, I can sacrifice it after attacking. And uh, maybe the opponent doesn't want to take the three damage. So they block with a creature, which I take out. And then I sacrifice this to maybe take out that damping sphere. Something like that to set up for a more explosive turn four that would have been turned off by the damping sphere an explosive lovely potential with castle gernbrig sunken citadel as always this is pretty exciting my brotherhood's end extinction event or ritual of soot which i used last night as the sweepers focusing more on the sources of red i figured of course it is a lovely thing to have more sweepers and i probably should to give myself a a better chance against aggro so that's why it's in no splashing and then giant cinema for life gain angels amalia explore hopefully they don't have removal for the cinder maw even though that is uh, pretty common but uh, very very exciting tonight i think we're going to be pleasantly surprised yeah but it is nice though to know you can splash with confidence easily seeing that one black you need the one blue the one white or the two white possibly depending how you tweak things it is nice to have those options and if you really want to hate against something specific you can do it you can do it man almost paralyzing with the amount of options then splashing for uh a counter spell test of talents actually is one of my favorites i haven't used it quite yet i don't think one in a blue to counter a instant or a sorcery and then you look through an opponent's hand and library and graveyard and you exile all copies of that you don't have to worry about flashbacks of that particular instant or sorcery anything like that i always liked its potential I don't exactly like the potential of this hand, though, with uh, no lands. Okay, uh, uh, technically, it is better with a single Castle Garenbeek. Oof. Uh, okay, let's let's get two one of these days. Okay. Oh, that's rough. Wow. Wow, that is... Uh... Well, we'll find out what they are. We'll mulligan completely down to zero, so we keep nothing. We're going to gain information and we're going to see how to sideboard potentially we won't concede you know right away huh? see if there's something black related inform our decisions later on yeah amalia explorer okay okay there we go if i would have conceded i wouldn't have known i mean i don't know if it is 
actually a Malia Explorer, but I'm pretty certain seeing the Razor Verge thicket turned something absolutely terrible into uh, something better. That was that was unfortunate, even for 18 lands. That technically, statistically speaking, you would assume and hope to see at least two lands in every variation of seven cards, but... Uh, yeah, that doesn't always happen. So, Giant Cinderma in. Pugnacious out. Pretty straightforward right there. This not doing anything in particular, but Cinderma potentially shutting them down. Do I like Brotherhood's End? I do. I do. Trimming three of those Dreadmaws. Maybe I could trim Tyrannix Rex, but this opponent has the potential to gain a bunch of life. Maybe there's some scenario where the Toxic and getting this opponent to 10 or more poison counters would help get the win if they have gained enough life but hey at least brotherhood's end taking out all those little life gain creatures that could possibly buy us some time maybe with this one mulligan one mulligan i think okay <laughs> my goodness I, that would have been rough if it continued to uh not go good for us yeah yeah Sunken to start. Definitely. At least I will get to Carnage Tarrant. Nurturing Bristleback next turn. Just to search for... Well, a source of red, really. Although I may not need to. We'll see how it goes. Nurturing Bristleback could search for that source of red. If I draw Otepic Huntmaster. But if I don't, things are looking pretty good. But I guess it isn't Amalia Explore. Just Celestia humans. Or it could be three color, four color. But I think Celestia humans. I'm going to forest cycle it. We don't have anything to play yet. Might as well be that commercial district though. Get the source of red just in case. All right. Don't exactly need Cavern of Souls. This is not an opponent with counter spells. <sighs> Field of Ruin is a little bit problematic, I must say. And we're not uh, completely dead yet. Oh, another Galt, a little bit unfortunate. Do yeah, Carnage Tent. Big time. Alright. Arc Druid's Charm would be pretty fantastic. I might actually use it on Carnage Tarrant to take out Raydan, God of the Worthy. And that'd be pretty good. Next turn I'm able to make seven, potentially. That's that's pretty close. Getting pretty close to Galta. That darn Archon of Ameria, though, could be rough. However, Galta putting everybody out all at once, well, that is also going to be rough, because... If Huntmaster survives, we may just be doing that. Won't attack with Carnage Town just because, well, hopefully we we get him. Huntmaster, stay alive. Hopefully they don't use Field of Ruin, but I suspect that's probably going to happen. Huh. Okay. Okay, make him bigger. We're not dead yet. We're not dead yet. Something with haste. Plenty's Hatcher. Regis or Alpha. Let's go. Oh, that... Darn. Shucks. Yeah, no. That's not enough to, to beat him, sadly. But uh, pretty close. Unfortunate to not see the stuff we needed. We absolutely didn't need that Sylvan Scrying. Maybe. Maybe I could trim Sylvan Scrying instead. Bring in Marauding Raptor. But, of course, assembling the parts... Of the lands grabbing the specific lands is very nice but maybe maybe just maybe marauding raptor would be better and a little bit more preferable than that sylvan scrying it's crazy to say because assembling the parts all the lands that i need is so incredibly important but yeah we'll see of course just grabbing a land you need to make a bunch of mana ramping that way durable very nice but 
against aggro that may not have been interacting much anyways. Having Huntmaster as a body, marauding, mix and match. Huh. Something to consider. Huh. Lots to consider for sure. Hopefully this uh, this opening game against this next opponent isn't nearly as painful. Of course, there's always a chance to see no lands, see no lands, see one, see no lands. Well, not not a zero percent chance. Hopefully, it's Azorius control. I gotta say, it's been a long time. I don't even remember the last time I faced regular Azorius Control. One of these days. But luckily, that is a pretty darn fantastic hand. Basically perfect. Sylvan scrying 100%, grabbing that Sunken Citadel, playing it. Definitely playing it on. Oh, I've. I might have. I've, thank you. Good stuff. Now we have to be a little bit worried about a counter spell. Sadly, what looks to be Azorius control. Hopefully it's regular. They went first. Having two untapped, maybe they're thinking about playing a land that enters tapped or playing a land that enters untapped just to potentially have that counter spell. Okay, okay. A little bit rough. We'll draw it out. Play Castle Garen, Big Sylvan Scrying. Of course, I imagine it's countered, but it's one less counter. Arc Druid's Charm next turn to... Well, never mind. Uh, I guess um, they let it happen. Good. Good. They're not too worried. Which I like. They're saving their counter spells for something they can't counter. That's what I want. Deadly. Alright. Sunken Citadel had to happen at some point. Next turn, the first Arc Druid's Charm, hopefully grabbing and putting the second Sunken on the battlefield, and then the second Arc Druid's eventually grabbing you-know-who. But wait until they do, uh, whatchamacallit. Yeah, stomp and ground. Something at instant speed, the, uh, the, the memory deluge. There you go, there you go. Now we have an opening. And now they're about to be dead. Probably. Pretty close. It would be better to grab Cavern of Souls in this case. We don't need the Sunken. We're able to make seven with that Cavern, eight with the Forest. Definitely protecting Galtus Stampede Tyrant next turn is going to be very, very important. Oh, what you got? Hopefully not Field of Ruin. Okay. Play your Teferi. Hold up mana for Wandering Emperor. Ready to exile a creature that you can't exile. Aw, oh, shucks. Commercial District, though. Oh my, there it is. Everybody doesn't have haste, but uh, hey. Trainix Rex should be landing. Maybe they have... I don't know, settle the wreckage. I don't really care, do it. We're gonna be dropping bombs every single turn, drawing a bunch of stuff. Ursaker Dreadma, lovely. Sweet me, I dare ya. Die. Oh boy. And also the nurturing bristleback, I must say that has been quite nice, but I want to draw stuff. I am left with three. And I can still play Arc Druid's Charm after playing Earthshaker, which they can't counter. Draw one thing, see if it's somebody hasty. Not the case. We'll see what Tyrannix Rex draws out. Maybe they were waiting for that Sweeper to gain a little bit more value. They didn't want to take out just one Tyrannix Rex, waiting until the absolutely last moment. But now, if they do something, we try for Arc Druids, and we may just kill him. Sweep. Doesn't matter. You're gonna die. Do it. Farewell. Sunfall. <laughs> okay. Okay. I like the looks of this. 
Guess we really just need Tyrannix Rex. See you later. Oh, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Grant me revenge. And if you do not listen, then the hell with you. <sighs> it certainly is revenge, but I guess the opponent is hoping for revenge. They are Conan in this case. Oh man, I'm just so happy I'm facing regular Azorius control to uh, decimate them. I've missed that quite a bit. They're playing them like a fiddle. You might think, oh, sweepers are rough, but it's pretty crazy. You want the opponent to sweep. You want them to basically tap out and you got all kinds of juicy, lovely bodies. If every single creature is big and scary, there you go. There you go. But we don't need to change anything. This is my favorite type of deck to face. Ooh. Man, man. Lovely though, with the memory deluge and able to play Arc Dude's Charm. Huh. You got some counter spells, you just wait till they tap out to do that, and you're good to go. We'll look for that opening as well, but the opponent knowing what we could do. Perhaps they will play around that potential. This hand does not have much potential though with a single forest. Okay, but way better, way better. 100%. Pugnacious to the bottom. Oh boy. And starting off with a Sunken Citadel. Lovely, lovely stuff. Hopefully they let the Sylvan Scrying happen, although I don't think that's gonna happen. Probably not. Oh, well, well, well. Pretty, pretty fantastic. Grabbing that Castle Garen being lovely that we have a Cavern of Souls. I don't have to worry about potentially grabbing it, but Arc Druids, next turn, maybe. We have to test the waters, wait and see if they do something, what they do. I would imagine we'd have some sort of opening. Huh. Good. There's the opening. Tapped out. Dead. Smack him with T-Rex on turn four. Oh, <laughs> I almost did the mistake again. I talked about T-Rex and then I accidentally grabbed it where I was meaning to grab a sunken, but just... Galta Stampede Tyrant next turn. There you go. That would be pretty, pretty nice. Whew, they'd almost be dead if they tap out to do anything. Ooh, Field of Ruin to take out Castle Garenbrake is and would be potentially rough. Huh. But we'll see what happens. They goofed up. But they know what I can do. Why? Why did they not take out Castle Garenbrake when they had the chance? They wouldn't have dealt with Tyrannix Rex, so I I don't get that. And now that they took out Cavern of Souls, I have another untapped land, which means I can play Otepic Huntmaster, which is also like... Man, that's good. I might as well play it. Ah. How's it going, Victor? Hopefully all is well with you. A little bit better than what this opponent is being dealt yeah no it's oh absolutely classic fantastic it has it has been too long but yeah they could have easily taken out castle garen brig and then i wouldn't have been doing that they would have been in a much better position because well i wouldn't have made seven mana on turn four i was able to make eight if i had a galta stampede tyrant i might have tried to do that but hey at the very least we just uh, maybe watch them concede call an ambulance call an ambulance but not for me <sighs> yeah oh boy sweet me oh I can play anything eat mana Turn four, that's that's pretty decent. Eight mana, and I don't even need Huntmaster, but having it down a little bit better potential to give other big things haste. It's good. Green beats blue. Yeah. I still haven't played Pokemon too much. It's been quite some time since I dabbled into it, but 
I do like it. Oh, okay, okay. Hmm, let me think. Well, let's make uh, as much mana as possible. Get pugnacious. Six. I'm gonna try for another pugnacious. And then Pelani's Hatcher. But maybe Earthshaker Dreadmaw. I might want to draw a bunch of cards. Grass beats water. Walk. This is true. This is true. The elements. Huh. They're thinking about countering. But they don't want to counter this because they know potentially there's other scarier stuff. They can't do anything to Tyrannix Rex. Maybe they have settled the wreckage, but again, I don't care what they have. Anything. It's regular Azorius control. They're going to die. Let's do another Pugnacious. I got a good feeling about this. They're waiting on something. Eh, that's all right. I don't care. Oh, oh. You won! You did it! Man, why can't I face Azorius control every single time? Oh. We got him. Good. Okie dokie. That was pretty nice. I gotta say, I like Huntmaster. An early thing, another early creature. If I don't need the ramp or the haste, at the very least, maybe it blocks some big creature from the opponent, but just jamming a little bit more specifically for this creature type early on. Boom. Support the main plan. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Excuse me. All right. Azorius Control, back to back. Maybe tonight is the night, once again. A couple weeks ago, maybe a month, two months ago, when I faced, I think, three or four Azorius Control opponents in one night. That was good. That hand is also good, big time. I love it. Four lands with a deck that only has 18, and one of those is Castle Gambrick. And we've got a source of red with Stomping Ground. If we draw that Otepic Huntmaster. Okay, well, we didn't quite yet. Should be all right. Hmm. Oh, my good. Should be all right. Sunken Citadel. If by chance we draw Archdruid's Charm. It's, uh, okay, well, then Castle Garenbig also nice. I'm going to go with Earthshaker Dreadma. I want to see what's up their sleeve. I don't draw a card, unfortunately, but I just want to see. Draw out something. Draw out removal that, well, might have been painful. Perhaps preserve other big things. Okay, okay. Oh, there it is. Boom. Maybe we got him. Really, Commercial District. Again, this is good. I can make six, seven, technically, with Commercial District. We see what's on top. Next turn, I'll be able to make eight. Carnage Tarrant, that's what we're doing. Strap yourselves in. Tap out to play Shieldred, and you are dead. Oh, boy. Do it. Some sort of transmogrify, cheating variation, whatever it is, hopefully this is impactful enough. They will take out Regis or Alpha with some sort of instant speed removal if they have it. Or Galta. Do it. Do it. Do it. Oh boy. Oops. I have another one in hand. Never normally would I put a second one in hand, second one out, because I already have one out. And Oh boy. Oh boy. Attack, attack, attack. Let's go. Goat. Grant me revenge. And if you do not listen to them, then the hell with you.
I, I clicked the wrong one. I meant to click the the UFC clip, but uh, oh baby, what was that? It's not vampires. It's some sort of shenanigans. Something that I think it might be transmogrify. Three in a red to sacrifice or exile a creature to search for a creature. And the only hit usually is a big thing. Atraxa. Something like that. Keep it the same? Let's keep it the same. Let's do that. Oh, oh my goodness. Beautiful. Lovely, lovely stuff. All right. Going to have to worry about a thought seize. We didn't see it that previous game, but I imagine the opponent is going to prioritize it. And that is a hand I'm keeping. Big time. Mulliganing because they didn't have a thought seize in that first hand, potentially. They're like, oh, shoot. I got a mulligan. I need a thought seize or a dress. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's got to be green for Sunken. We need the two green for Castle Garenbrig's activated ability. Cavern of Souls is not going to be that. Huh. Damping Sphere. Damping Sphere. Well, take it out with Arcdruid's Charm and uh, hopefully that works. Oh boy. Oh boy, what's it going to be? Sylvan Scrang to grab the other Sunken. Lovely stuff. This Sunken I'm going to choose green too. It has to be green. I need the three green next turn with the Arc Druids. But my third green would still enter tapped if it was Castle Garenbrick. Now we get to do what we need to do. Oh boy. Here goes nothing. We'll leave Damping Sphere out, potentially hurting the opponent so they can play less stuff. If we draw Galta Stampede turn next turn, they're close to dead. Okay, that's not Galta Stampede turn, but we'll just play Tranix Rex and smoke them. Oh, shucks. Man. Good stuff. What are they doing? Hmm. A little bit too late for that, buddy. If Hopefully they don't have Shodred's Edict, but... Oh boy, what's it going to be? Caught between a rock and a hard place. Next turn I could play the two Pugnaciouses. That's pretty good. Uh, they got something bad coming up. I thought it was Transmogrify. Okay. Atraxa, very good. They got a Shieldred Zedict, unfortunately. We, unfortunately, we are losing... We are losing Tranix Rex. That's too bad. Tends to do the trick. Okay, okay. Pretty good. Hopefully we top deck another T-Rex. That would be nice. Hmm. Get rid of that Carnage turn. Okay. Down to four. Scary. Oh. Sunken. Definitely choosing red at this point. Then we'll play both Pugnaciouses. Potentially, I would imagine uh, we're probably done for here. Transmogrify on Atraxa to get more. They'll attack with the tracks and then perhaps transmogrify it or something like that. Hmm. I like the looks of that. No, no, Huntmaster, don't, don't, don't do that. Huntmaster for two. I have four left over. Pelani's Hatcher, lovely stuff. Hopefully, things live and whatnot. Hmm. What will they do? Doesn't make any sense for Pugnacious to attack. Oh. 
pretty good stuff. Torch the tower. I like it. At least I have two eggs. Oh boy. Painful. There's not a whole lot of ways out of this scenario. We got enough men at this point. Don't exactly need Huntmaster, but maybe we get the Arcturid's Charm to take out Atraxa. It makes Pugnacious Hammer Skull 7 power, so taking Atraxa out just like that could be our ticket. Basically, potentially. That's okay. Arc to its turn. Oh, that's not Arc to its turn. And that is not going to do it. Darn. Nuts. Huh. Pick your poison. That's what we're doing. Huntmaster, likely, mostly always dead. This is a deck with Fatal Push and whatnot. But as long as we have Pick Your Poison, at least we can take out Atraxa for one single green. Or possibly, again, use Pugnacious with Arcdruid's Charm. Boom. Get him. Okay. Let's do it. Like it? Um, could be better. Could be a lot worse. Let's, let's keep that. Sylvan's Crying, Arc Druids. Hopefully it's not turn one thought. See, ooh. Okay, that was a close one. Commercial District, though. That is lovely stuff. We don't need Galt to Stampede Tarrant. And they might think, oh, they put it into the graveyard, so they probably have it in their hands. Ah. We'll see. Do I want Sylvan's Crying to grab us? Yeah, I do. I do. I could have gone Castle this turn. Arc Druids to grab Sunken, but might as well be Sunken this turn. Always enters tapped. Next turn, Arc Druids grabs a second Sunken, and maybe their chances have Sunken by that point. Hopefully it's not Damping Sphere, but they know how much that is painful. Darn. Nuts. Okay, okay, well... We'll just have to take it out again. Leave that damping sphere around. Hopefully they don't transmogrify that skeleton, but it appears to be the case. Okay, okay, good. Too bad though. Oh boy. Carnage Tarrant, 100%. Hopefully they don't have Shieldred's Edict, which they would use on whichever thing I played, but... Uh, we'll see. No Transmogrify. Don't do it. But if they do, they won't have any mana left over to take out Carnage Tarrant, so uh, we, sh we still could be in a pretty good position, I hope. Okay, that's looking good. No Transmogrify still. I let oh, 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 okay. Oh, oh, baby. Here goes nothing. Earthshaker Dreadmaw, play it. Draw one card, supercharge potentially next turn. Another, okay. They have to win, or they have to have a Thought Seize next turn if they don't, but they want to deal with Carnage turn. They have to deal with the two big things that I have out. One of those things is hard to handle. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh boy, you better be scared. Oh yeah, let's do it. It's now or never. Here goes nothing. Extinction event, that is something. And they also lose their creature, so they can't transmogrify. Do they have a thought seize? Do they don't? Yes, no, maybe so. Oh, okay. That's gotta be it. We have a Regisaur and Pliny's Hatcher. Oh my goodness. That's what it's all about, folks. That's how you do it. Surprise. 
Gotcha. Oh. You have no power here. Yeah. Oh, man. Ooh. That was good. Oh, man. That was... it, it, that, I love combining. That actually worked pretty good. Get him a body bag. Yeah. And then you got the head nod. I like being creative with this. This is a load of barnacles. Okay. Whew. Doing exactly what I would hope, and uh, yeah. That's a load of barnacles. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. It, hey, at the very least, do you see how it's important to have hate against one specific artifact? In this case, it was Damping Sphere, which stops all the big mana I make. But again, Torpor Orb in two days. Stopping creatures with enter the battlefield effects and triggers. It's not going to be fun. But I don't think it's going to be much of a problem. Yeah. Oh, not keeping that hand though. One sunken citadel. Not going to do it. That's a lot better. Of course, lovely stuff. Commercial district to start. We see what's on top. If it is a land... I'll probably keep it if it is Sylvan Scrying. I'm definitely gonna keep it. Send Pugnacious to the bottom one of the two Pugnacious Hammer Skulls, because the least impactful thing. Maybe this is Amalia Explorer. Perhaps. What would they get rid of? Okay. Okay. Interesting. Oh my goodness. There you go. Oh. Sunken. Lovely. We basically only need to see... Yeah. Only need to see a... Sylvan Scrying or an Arctrude's Charm to grab the second Sunken and we're off to the races. However, what kind of a deck is this? We see green, black, and blue with sleight of hand. Is it some sort of... Phoenix? Variation? Who knows? Okay, so maybe it is. Interesting. I don't know why they have the green though. I do and did see Demir Phoenix quite a bit. Just blue and black. Lots of discard stuff to get it into the graveyard. Huh. Maybe they're splashing the green for pick your poison to have a better matchup against the Rakdos vampires. I could see that being a thing. Okay, I have no idea what's going on. Delve. Oh, this is Sultai Delve. That must be. At the very least, I'm playing Earthshaker Dreadmaw. They're getting rid of Carnage Tyrant, 100%. Gotta be. Unless, oh, they don't do the math. Well, fortunately for them, they don't realize I was able to make six. I actually wasn't able to play Regis or Alpha, which is, uh, what's well, funny stuff. They see the low amount of lands, they think, oh, that's the first thing they're going to get to. I can make six green on turn four, but I can't have, uh, look at them, see. They just realize they're goof. Nah, not really my style. I do appreciate, you know, the expression of colorful language it doesn't really bother me but i don't swear myself personally and i you know, just want uh, everybody to be able to watch this and it's not a a shtick it's just who i am yeah be yourself i mean sometimes my feathers do get kind of ruffled, depending on the opponent, but that's a very rare occasion. Hmm. Now, yeah. it just must be Sultai Delve. I have faced this before, quite some time ago. Painful 
painful potential. Earth Shaker? Well, hey, at the very least, I'm drawing one card. Tapping four lands to play a 6 6 trample draw card. It's Cavern, which is nice. So if we draw a land that enters untapped next turn, they may just be dead. Love it. Oh, man. I'm excited for Vaultborn. We couldn't have played Vaultborn Tyrant in that case. I still was only able to make six. So there could be some scenarios where Earthshaker Dreadmaw maybe is a little bit more preferable. But the potential of Vaultborn is definitely better. Gaining a bunch of life if they kill it. We get a copy that we gain a bunch of life and draw a card again. Hmm. What you got? Okay. Murderous cut. That's not too bad. We're not dead yet, although that Stormwing entity with prowess getting a little bit bigger whenever they cast a non creature spell. It's scary. Hopefully, we're not. Well, we shouldn't be dead this turn. Hopefully. Okay, well, that, that could be bad. 10. We might just live. Go to two. As long as they don't have another thought seize to get rid of Galta. Okay. Eleven. Okay. Land on tap. Land on tap. You can do it. That's not land on tapped. However, this might be lethal. If they don't have fatal push for the token. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, Vaultborn Tyrant, it's absolutely nuts. I, some of you guys are cluing into that, but I can't explain how nuts Vaultborn Tyrant is going to be, yes. I think that was you, Victor. I forget who got me onto that clip. The best cinematic laugh in a movie. I think that's possibly in the running, but uh, yeah, Nocturne, oh, Vaultborn Tyrant. I don't think I'll ever cut it. It negates a lot of the pain from Shieldred. Big thing enters. We gain a bunch of life. We gain more life than the drain. Losing two whenever we draw a card, but we would at least net uh, one. One or two. I think it is three life whenever a creature with power four or greater enters. It might be four. I don't know. Either way. Oh my goodness. It just elevates everything I'm already doing. It's kind of like they made that just just for me. I don't think that's the case, but perhaps somebody at Wizards secretly, uh, they watch my channel. They're like, we're going to throw that hardcore dinosaur-only player a bone to chew on. Yeah. Oh, 100%. It is better than the... A prosperous innkeeper in some cases because multiple big creatures enter three six nine uh, twelve if four things enter to gain 12 life but with prosperous innkeeper that would have been only four life uh, interesting oh oh absolutely and not requiring dinosaurs to draw we're going to be seeing Vaultborn tyrant show up Quite a bit. Not just in a dinosaur deck. Yeah. This hand could be a little bit problematic, not having two untapped on turn two, but when the hand has a Sunken Citadel and a Castle Garenbrig, usually I like to risk it. Hopefully. We'll see. Land. Anything. Okay. That's a little bit rough. Send Carnage Tyrant away and uh, eh, live a little, risk a little. Well, hey, when it's all good and big stuff, you don't really care too much if uh, Thoughtseize gets rid of 
the stuff. Oh, phew. But, hey, and I couldn't have even played Pugnacious anyways, because that Castle Garenbrake enters the battlefield tapped. If all of a sudden, though, we get Arcturus Charm, we dig for another Sunken Citadel, that would be nice. Fortunately, the opponent is also a little bit mana screwed. Oh my, oh, oh, yeah. this is, this is getting wacky. Okay, <laughs> one of us has to get another land at some point here. Oh, that's maybe not good. So, oh boy, they got a counter spell. Wait, that's not the one. They must have a counter spell, I bet. Okay, they don't have a counter spell. This is, uh, this is getting interesting. Choose a source of red and just in case we have to play Pliny's Hatcher. But if we draw land that enters untapped next turn, ooh, yeah, Verdant Sun's Avatar. That is, oh, pseudo, it's absolutely nuts. I would like to, oh, oh boy, oh my goodness, what's going on? Yeah, the Verdant Sun's gaining life whenever a creature enters the battlefield. You gain life equal to its toughness. Very good stuff. But uh, they need to kill us next turn. What's going to happen? Don't push it. Don't push it. I'll give you a war you won't believe. That would be very insane life gain. I don't care if it sings. I only care how it tastes. <laughs> oh. Man. Hey, just stick with it. You know, eventually down the line, things will probably change. That was a very odd case right there, that game. Another potential clip, okay. Yeah, I'm glad I'm adding a few more clips here and there. Uh, I could see that, possibly. I mean, technically it is mono green. There is very few ways to make red, but I don't know if I could ever cut Polanyi's Hatcher and Regis or Alpha. I want the haste potential. I want to be able to attack. The turn I drop everything, but maybe. I'm sure I'll try it out at some point. Mono green, consistency wise, that would be lovely stuff. And sprinkling in some ways, other ways to give everybody haste uh, crashing drawbridge i believe that's the name an artifact creature a wall two for a zero four it can tap to give all your other creatures haste and that could be something keeping with the mono green potential we'll see we'll see green cavalier yeah yeah I could see that. The life gain, surviving in the face of stuff. A little bit more susceptible to control, I guess. If we suspect the opponent has a sweeper, Supreme Verdict, or Sunfall, that sort of thing, they would sweep us on the following turn, but if we just kill them with everybody being hasty, yeah. Surak and Gorklaw, though, which I did use previously and I have used in the past, that would maintain the mono green theme and it would give everybody haste on the turns that I'm dropping them or just on future turns so yeah it wouldn't be too much of a hoop to jump through that could be good something to think about definitely but I, I think I'll leave it there absolutely fantastic night it wasn't quite an hour but I would like to do two hours three hours but uh yeah, that's not always the case. But sometimes, sometimes you just make the magic happen. Oh, I'm just glad I could do it as long as I did tonight. Hopefully you guys had a good weekend. You're having success with dinosaurs and you're counting down the hours now. The minutes until Vaultborn Tyrant and uh, Thunder Junction changes everything. For a lot of people, not just the dinosaur deck and green stuff. It's going to be, it's going to be pretty good. Lovely, lovely. Yes. Thanks for watching Nocturne, Victor, FK, JDX, Commander Crane, anybody else. Have a good one. Peace.
time to get some sleep. 